Now that we've mastered importing images from the camera and the photo library, we've got a couple of new skills to learn before we start building our Instagram app, and they are how to create spinners and alerts within our app. So let's find out straight away how to do that. I'm going to create a new project, so single view, spinners and alerts. Save it there on the desktop. And then we'll start off in main storyboard. And we'll start with alerts. Alert is a simply a little pop-up that appears on the top of the screen. So it can be used as a message or to give the user an option to OK something or cancel it. And while we're here, we'll create buttons for creating our spinners. So a spinner is used to essentially indicate that the app is busy doing something. And it often blocks the user interaction as well. So we'll need methods to create the spinner and also to stop it. So let's start by creating an action for create alert. Next, we'll do the same for pause app. And finally, control dragging for restore app. There we go. All right, so now we can do everything else in viewcontroller.swift and we'll do the alert first. So you probably won't be surprised to know that we need to create an alert controller, which allows us to control and display the alert. This is gonna be a UI alert controller and we're gonna create it with a title message and preferred style. So the title is just going to be, hey there, very simple. And this is going to be one of those alerts that allows the user to select yes or no. So we'll ask the question, are you sure? And then we're not going to customize the style at all. So we'll just use the default UI alert controller style. Yeah. It's not there. There it is, dot alert. Okay, so that will create our alert, but it won't actually display it yet. Before we display it, we're gonna add an action to it. So add action, and we create a UI alert action to do that. And again, we're going to have a title and a style. So the title is going to be OK. So that's what will appear on the button. The style is going to be just the default style. And then the handler is what happens when the button is pressed. So we'll just print button pressed and also close down the alert. And we do that using self to get the view controller and then dismiss. And as always, might as well have the animation in there, but we don't care about the completion. We don't want to do anything when the alert is completely dismissed. And we just need a name there for our action. We're not actually going to refer to it as anything, so I'm just going to put action there. And I think somehow I missed off a bracket. Okay, so that will then create our alert, but it again won't actually display it. So to do that, we need to use self.present 
and we want to present our alert controller animated true and completion again we don't really care what happens when it's alerted or at least we don't need to do anything special when it is so let's have a quick look we should now find that we get a simple alert with an OK button that we can press to dismiss the alert and if we wanted do anything else here we go let's give it a go so create alert and there it is so you can see we've got hey there are you sure okay wonderful and then we're back to the app of course then if we wanted to add another option we could just do that in the same way so if we wanted to add no then we could do exactly the same thing but of course we could run different code there depending on what the user has pressed let's just see that in action so create alert and now we've got two options okay and no and we can keep track of which one was pressed brilliant so that's how we work with alerts we're going to use those in the instagram app but they're really useful in all sorts of apps so now let's see how we can create a spinner to show that the app is busy doing something. So for a spinner, we need a variable which I'm going to call activity indicator, which is a UI activity indicator view. So as you can imagine, it indicates activity. It's essentially a little spinning wheel that displays in front of the UI content and shows the user that the app is busy. We're going to need to refer to this variable in two different methods, pause app and restore app. So I'm going to create it out here so that it's accessible from both of those. So as you might expect, we're going to create our activity indicator and we're going to apply various options to it. So first off, when it's created, we're going to give it a certain size. So that's going to be a frame. And we're going to create a CG rect. So a rectangle with four numbers. And I'll choose the X, Y width and height. So the X and Y are going to be zero, zero. So it's not going to be offset at all. And then the width, I'll choose 50 pixels and the height 50 pixels. And then close that parenthesis. Then we set the location. So I'm going to set the activity indicator center to be the center of the view. So self dot view dot center next we set hides when stopped and we want that to be true generally you will want the activity indicator to hide when it is stopped then we set the activity indicator view style and I'm just going to use UI activity indicator view style dot gray. So that's the standard style. You can change it if you like, but it's always good really to use the default UI elements as that is what the user is used to seeing. Okay, then we can take our view and we can add a sub view to it. And the sub view that we're going to add is activity indicator. So notice this is not a controller. We're not presenting a new view controller or anything like that. We're just adding a new view or element to our existing view controller. And then once we've added it, we're going to take our activity indicator and start animating. Okay, that's all well and good. But just before we run it, Let's add the ability to stop the activity indicator, which we can do 
just by using activity indicator dot stop animating. There we go. So let's take a look. We should now find that our activity indicator appears in the middle of the screen when we press the button, spins around merrily, and then stops as soon as we press restore app. There we go. So there's our little spinner, and then restoring the app stops that from happening. Now quite often, you'll notice that the app is still interactive here. So quite often, you, when you've got the spinner there, you want the app to not be interactive. And to do that, you use UI application to access your application, and then shared, and then begin ignoring interaction events. So that's pretty major. That says that you're not going to allow the user to interact with your app at all. So that wouldn't really work well for this particular app because the only way that we've got of stopping the spinner is by pressing the button, which we won't be able to do if we're ignoring interaction events. So normally, of course, you'd use this for something like downloading some information from the internet or maybe doing something particularly code heavy within your app that takes a long time. So you could use something like this because you know that you're going to restore interaction at some point soon. But in this app, it wouldn't work. I'm just showing you how we would do it. So then if we wanted to restore it, we'd use your application dot shared dot end ignoring interaction events. So just to convince you why this wouldn't work, if we try that out now, when we create the spinner, we'll find that now we can't actually click on any of those things. So our app is lifeless. So I'm going to comment these out because they're no good for our particular app. But usually when you're using a spinner, you're going to want to ignore those interaction events. Okay, wonderful. So now we've learned everything that we need to know to start building our Instagram app. And that's exactly what we're going to do with a login and sign up system in the next video.